water. Everyone needs it. We need it for drinking. We need it for bathing. We need it for growing healthy and delicious farm products. We also need water to cook our food, wash the dishes, and water our gardens so we can enjoy trees, flowers, and grass to play on. This is April and Freddie. They have a special connection to water in California. Join us as we learn about where water comes from and all of the wonderful things it does for us. Where does water come from? When we turn on a faucet or the hose, it's always there. How did it get there? Did it fall from the sky? If you listen, maybe you'll learn something, Squirt. Well now, yes. Water falls as rain, snow, sleet, and hail. In most years, California gets about 182 million acre feet of water this way, known as precipitation. An acre foot is enough to cover one acre, an area about the size of a football field with water one foot deep. Where does all this water go? About two thirds is used by trees and other plants. Part of it soaks into the ground and the rest evaporates back into the atmosphere to become rain or snow again. The remaining one-third of the water runs off into rivers, streams, and lakes and stays on the surface of the ground. This surface water is a major part of our water supply. Most of California's rivers, streams, and lakes are in the north because that's where about 75% of the precipitation falls. Southern California has much less rain so it has fewer rivers and lakes. Water that percolates or soaks into the ground is called groundwater. It collects in underground areas called aquifers that contain huge amounts of water like giant sponges. Aquifers can be large or small or very close to the surface or deep underground. California has about 450 groundwater basins covering areas about half the size of California. Much of this water is too far underground to reach. To get water up to the surface, wells are drilled down to the aquifers. Pumps driven by electricity, diesel fuel, or natural gas then bring water to the surface. Sometimes water from under the ground rises naturally to the surface in what we call springs. We depend on rain and snowfall to resupply all of the surface water and groundwater we use. But in California, we can't be sure how much snow and rain we'll get from year to year. Sometimes we have very long dry periods called droughts with very little rain. Other times it rains so much we have floods. In normal years, surface water provides about two thirds of the water we use. Groundwater makes up the other one third of our water supply. In drought years, groundwater might supply more than half of our water. Some areas of the state use only groundwater. Other areas use groundwater when they don't have enough surface water. The main problem is uneven distribution. In California, 75% of the water falls in the northern third of the state, but about 75% of the people live in the southern two-thirds of the state below Sacramento. And the highest demand for water is during the summer months when it rains very little. So getting the water to where it's needed when it's needed is a problem, and unfortunately, a very expensive problem. How does everyone get the water they need? To solve the problem, water must be moved. People have been moving water since the first settlers came to California. In the late 1700s, the Spanish missionaries dug ditches to carry water from nearby streams to their crops. In the 1850s, gold miners used miles and miles of ditches to get the water where they needed it for mining. Today, water is stored in reservoirs so that it's available when it's needed and then moved through aqueducts to where it's needed. Aqueducts are canals, pipelines, and tunnels that carry water across land and over mountains. The system of aqueducts in California moves water farther than anywhere else in the world. The California Aqueduct is the longest aqueduct in California. It begins at the Delta, where the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers come together and flow into the San Francisco Bay. The aqueduct stretches 444 miles to Southern California. It provides water to cities in Southern California and in the San Francisco Bay Area. And it provides water to farms in the central and southern parts of the state. But the California Aqueduct is just one of the aqueducts in the state that move water from one area to another. A network of major aqueducts, canals, ditches, and pipelines also move the water that we use every day. How do you store the water that's moved? Reservoirs are used to store water. 
Reservoirs are usually lakes formed by dams. We have more than 1,300 reservoirs in California. Do reservoirs just store water? Don't you know anything? Reservoirs do more than store water. Many have power plants. The force of the water as it flows out from behind the dam is used to turn generators that produce electricity. This electricity, called hydroelectricity, is a clean, inexpensive source of electricity. The power from hydroelectric plants is often used at pumping plants along the aqueducts to pump water over mountains. Awesome! The dams on many reservoirs also keep large amounts of water from rushing down rivers all at once and causing a flood. This is one more purpose for dams that helps protect the lives and property of people living downstream from a dam. Most reservoirs are also used for recreation like fishing, boating, and swimming. But mainly our reservoirs supply billions of gallons of water a day to farms, homes, and businesses when and where it's needed. Imagine what it would be like to go through a day without water. I'd be thirsty. I would wilt. While reservoirs and aqueducts provide much water to Californians, in many parts of the state, people get their water from right beneath their feet. Wells are drilled into the ground to collect the water that seeps into them from the spaces between underground rocks and soil particles. Some wells are hundreds of feet deep and can provide thousands of gallons of water per minute. About 6,000 public drinking systems use groundwater. Many homeowners in rural areas use groundwater beneath their property to meet their water needs. Both surface and groundwater are moved around California in aqueducts. Think about all the ways we use water each day. Without it, you couldn't take a bath or a shower. You couldn't flush the toilet. You couldn't boil eggs, cook rice, or make lemonade. Your clothes would be dirty all the time because you couldn't wash them, and you couldn't do something as simple as taking a drink of water. And you couldn't fight fires. Water is important to many other people as well. People in business use water to make products, to fight fires, and to clean equipment. And don't forget about farmers. They use water to grow the crops that we eat and to give to livestock to drink. Water is also very important to the environment. Fish live in it, animals in the wild drink it. Plants and trees needed to grow and flowing rivers are completely made up of, you guessed it, water. While we all use water to meet our everyday needs, we don't have an unlimited supply. That's why it's important for everyone to do their part to use water wisely. That means doing things like shutting off the water while you brush your teeth, or using a broom instead of a hose to clean off the driveway. Little things like that can go a long way to stretch our water supply. To keep California's native plants like me beautiful. Here are more ideas you can use to help conserve water. Share them with your family and friends so more people will know how to be water wise. Efficient dishwashers and clothes washing machines help save water. Many newer dishwashers and clothes washing machines use less water than older ones and get clothes just as clean. Nice save! Low water use toilets use less water with each flush and can save thousands of gallons of water a year. Nice save! Low flow shower heads can cut water use by up to 75%. Nice save! Drip irrigation puts water just where the plants are, not in the surrounding soil. Watering your garden can be done efficiently while still producing great looking flowers and great tasting vegetables. Um, nice save? Duh! Watering your yard can be taken a step farther by using a computerized irrigation controller. Some models even use weather data to decide exactly how much water your garden needs. Selecting the right plants for your garden can make a big difference too. Some plants naturally use less water than others, especially plants that are native to California. Look for them when deciding what to plant in your flower beds or garden. Nice save! Automatic shutoff nozzles are a great way to save water when you're washing your car. The water runs only when you need it and stays off when the hose is on the ground. Nice save! So you see, Californians everywhere can work together to keep our state beautiful, conserve our precious water resources, and still do important things like grow healthy and delicious food and keep water flowing to homes and businesses everywhere. It just takes common sense and some thought on how we use water every day. Nice!